Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. I'm going to try to keep things brief uh, so as to not overwhelm people, but um, there's so many things that I come across and then end up incorporating into ideas and stuff, um, big revelations that end up being put into videos that run long and do incorporate many other things, and I think they get missed. And so I want to start doing abbreviated uh, videos, more abbreviated for my long-windedness, as I'm trying to explain to you what I'm doing in a very long-winded <laughs> manner. It's just me. Um, and, and giving you uh, little bits and blurbs that maybe you can share with others uh, so they can see clearer what's really going on here. And this is the Schottenstein edition of the Talmud. And so we have a copy of this, which strangely got lost in our tiny little house, but then I've found it again. And really, the Talmud is um, all about the Torah, Torah, first five books of Moses. It's commentary about um, what does this really mean? What is the original interpretation? If you look on Google, they will tell you this was done between the 3rd and 8th centuries. Uh, the reality is it's, it's always ongoing as things are always revised. And if you are just reading um, from the Bible and you think you're reading what was written in the Torah, it's not always the case. In fact, often it's totally distorted and not even close. Uh, to giving you um, what was given to them that were living in these times and and the people that came thereafter. This is just really fascinating and it is a little disorientating because it does, um, it basically goes upside down, inside out. It, it, it's reading from back to front and, and it's an inverse of what you would expect. It's in the Hebrew and it's also translated um, into English and also has notes so you can cross reference. And I have spent long periods of time in the past uh, cross referencing to look for what is the real meaning going on. And, you know, as a lay person, uh, I, I probably spent more time than most, you know, digging deep into what is really going on. What are they really trying to say? When we look at Tartaria, which is, it's a little bit of a phenomenon going on now as people are jumping on the Tartaria bandwagon. And, and I think more people are looking for Tartaria than Atlantis, Lemuria, or Mew at this point in time because it's, we take it to be the one that was closest to us. As far as a global situation, as this says, it was worldwide. Yes, absolutely. The alien invasion is written in the Torah, and it's written in the Talmud, and they give you a much clearer <laughs> uh, idea of what's really going on when you actually you know, read the interpretations of the rabbis that are talking about these things. As you see, all over the world, Algeria here, um, Pretoria, Calcutta, Delhi, uh, Tehran, Buenos Aires, San Jose, I mean, all over the world, Chicago, Winnipeg. This was a global civilization, global. Advanced technology, beautiful buildings, amazing architecture that we don't see duplicated in these days. There's lots of things that many people are waking up to. Montana, right here, the Missoula County Courthouse. Why is this so much bigger and more grand than anything around it? Why do you got little shanties and shacks around, you know, something that's so big and obviously was important? It, it, it boggles the mind that we think that something like this, right? And this person gets it to a degree, Sirius B., um, this is somebody to follow on Twitter X. Most of Tataria looks like this. Then the invasion came. We've been under invasion for over 200 years now. Well, you know, add a zero and maybe times it by five. And then that's, that's maybe a little closer um, from what I feel. But at the same time, this is a war that's ongoing. It ebbs and flows. Ebbs and flows. It's a multidimensional war. Look at this building. Look at that. It's just amazing. You know, they don't build things like this anymore. They don't have that attention to detail. They don't have that 
that love of expression that you could see the people that built this have. You know, it's just a different level of of really happiness in so many ways. This is not about ego. This is about expression. I love it. I mean, it's beautiful. It's breathtaking. It's awe-inspiring. It's something that is heart-expanding. And that's what I think so many of these buildings were at one point. They were actually to raise the vibration in the person. And just at first look, just at first look, that makes you feel better. You know, can you imagine going in it and, and the stonework and... Uh, the artwork, um, this is to raise spirits in a, in a serious way. And that's what uh, what I believe Tataria was all about. It was all about uh, evolution. It was all about bringing people to the highest vibration possible for a civilization. And uh, it was like that until it wasn't. And then it fell. And then these other beings came to take place and they took possession. You know, my question is when uh, people found this, you know, who, who gets to lay claim to it? Because we know darn good and well, it, it wasn't made by that generation that found it. Nowhere near. Mm -mm. No, and, and again, uh, how old is it? Because when we're in the new world, which is really an old world, there is no you know, designating. Uh, this was global civilizations that we were talking about. So we might think that, and we're brought up with the fact that the Americas are the new world. Not really the case. It, it's just, when was this reset? When did the reset happen there? Uh, Nicola 3 saying, do you think the technologies of the last century are presented to mankind as new technology? As you see, there are depictions that are very, very interesting of many things and, and even things, oh, that one everybody has seen, even other things too uh, in time periods that don't seem to make sense uh, and are incongruous. Like that one again, that's clearly a helicopter. What are we really talking about here? Is it some sort of glitch in the matrix? We could we could see and understand that, that things just get rehashed time and time again in different ways. Oh yeah, you know, there's so much hidden from us because everything that we see in this system is truly a lie and an illusion. And to, to think that people still blindly trust certain aspects of this is, is pure insanity at this time. Pure insanity if you trust any aspect of, of this current, well, it, it's more than political. It, it's religious. It's political. It, it's, it's penetrated every aspect of our existence. It's one system. It's one system. It is absolutely a conquering system. And, you know, here you have, we didn't build it, n n not, not Homo sapiens sapiens, uh, not, not the current ruling elite that we have on the planet. Uh, and no, and, and the, ru the root of elite is E-L, which is a, a word that has been used to denote uh, beings called gods, which re again are, are not gods. They're, they're not gods, or you could say they're not the creator of this universe. No absolutely not the creator of this universe found not built you know this is a, a phrase that a lot of people um are using nowadays we found these we didn't build them we didn't build them our our civilization that we currently are finding ourselves in did not build this but you know what's fascinating is the fact that when you when you look into the talmud you will find that there's there's words used there, choice words, that are not the choice words that we find when we look at the King James Bible, when we look at the New International Version, about any of these versions. Because, you know, what you get is this. You know, Hero Israel, the Lord, our God, is one Lord. Everything has been twisted into Lord and God, and and not the original words. And these words are very, very different when you look into the actual Torah. And it's, it's very noted, uh, it was noted by me, when I'm, I'm looking at the interaction with King David uh, talking to uh, Yahweh, 
And what does he refer to him as? He refers to him not as the creator. He does not say, O creator of this universe. No. Master. Master. And that's the biggest key of all. Master of the universe. Master. Master is what slaves call the, that person that is in charge over them, ruling over them. Here you see, this is the King James Version. And it shall be when the Lord thy God, and again, you know, this is denoting, and that Lord really says Yahweh, uh, your God, your particular uh, judge, your particular ruler. As anybody that has actually studied this, looking at the original uh, Hebrew knows, you know, this, this is not about uh, the creation of the universe. This is not even about the creation of earth. It, no, no, this is about the, the beings that came in and conquered, the masters that have made the rest of us slaves under them. Ah, yes, you know, it's very clear. And, and yet the God spell that two-thirds of the world is, has been under is, is still very, very strong because it is a spell. It literally is a God spell. Uh-huh. Have brought thee into the land which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, to Jacob, to give these, you know, great and goodly cities, which you didn't build, which you found. <laughs> Here you go. Found, not built. You know, the system didn't build this. The system took it by force. The houses full of all good things, which thou filtst not. In other words, they took it over by military force, they stole it, they didn't dig the wells, they didn't, you know, make the provisions, they didn't, uh, you know, again, you, you will eat of theirs, you will live in their houses, you, you will take their things, you didn't make any of it, you just conquered them. And here you go, this is much more clear, these are the com commands, laws, and rules that Yahweh and a particular individual, your Elohim, meaning there are other of the same classification. This has never been about the creator of this universe. It has never been that. And yet that is the illusion that they put in front of um, the Christians of the world and, and the Muslims of the world as well. No, you know, it, it's never been about the creator of this universe. This is one of the conquerors, your Elohim. Elohim translates to uh, those that judge mankind, those that watch over mankind, those that have conquered the mighty ones, the powerful ones, the ones that have technology more advanced than ours, those that are a military force, because again, when it says Lord of hosts, hosts are armies. So this is, again, this is a military takeover that this is talking about. It could not be any more clear. And, it, you know, it, it's telling you, again, to w write down the words that they're giving you, wear them as headbands, put, put them on your head, put words on your forehead. Where did you hear that before? That's very biblical. Yeah, because, again, you know, slaves and sheep, flock, are marked. They're branded. So you have your brand. And so you're marking yourself with the name Yahweh, who is only one being of a classification of beings called Elohim. Again, mighty ones, judges, rulers, conquerors. And it says the same thing again here, that that part is accurate. We're going to bring you into a land that you will take by military force. They're going to have large, prosperous cities. You're going to take them over. You didn't build them. You just took them from them. Your houses are going to be filled with all kinds of things that you didn't put there. You stole them through military conquest. Wells that you didn't dig, vineyards and olive trees that you didn't plant. And you will get to eat all you want as long as you buy onto the system. This is what it's telling you. This is what the Talmud is telling you. And it's also just sim simply saying that, don't worry, the real controllers... Who, who are extraterrestrials, will send plagues and, and weaken those people ahead of time. We'll make them uh, frail and ill. We'll, we'll use plagues, we'll, we'll create famines, and then you will come in and sweep them all away and conquer them. 
And it's very, very telling that time and time again, when you look to the Talmud, it refers to this, these entities and the one in particular called Yahweh as masters of the universe, conquerors, slave handlers. You will dislodge those peoples before you little by little. You will not be able to put an end to them all at once. Otherwise, the wild beasts would multiply to your hurt. And again, you know, your God, your, your mighty one, your extraterrestrial overlord is in your midst and is an awesome and fearful one. You know, this, this is going to deliver, these beings are going to deliver the kings that are in these prosperous, peaceful nations into your hand and you will obliterate their name from under the heavens. No one shall stand up to you until you have wiped them out. You shall consign the images of their gods to the fire. You shall not covet the silver and gold on them and keep it for yourselves, lest you be ensnared by. No, it, that goes into the storehouse of the Lord, as is clearly described in the taking of Jericho. And, and also the same thing with uh, the women that have not, you know, known other males. You know, you, they, they are allowed to take them for themselves as well it is absolutely a takeover that this is all about this this is totally a extraterrestrial takeover and this is what the original translations show again you know david refers to yahweh as the master of the universe not the creator of the universe so i encourage everybody to get your hands on a talmud and look at the actual translations you know, and then we, you really understand where this is coming from. And what I, I mean, the first time I touched that Talmud, it like, it hurt my arm. It like really physically made it hurt. And then today I was looking at it and I realized my eyeballs, my eyeballs were actually aching. So it, it is, a, a, it's a spell. It's a spell. So you need to be careful. You want to cleanse after you read it. I hate to say it, but when they're talking about putting, uh, putting words on something and tying this on your body, that's, that's spell work. It's spell work to own you, to own, to make y your consciousness theirs so that they, you're giving them permission to treat you like a puppet therefore you're going to do as they want you to do because you're voluntarily doing what they say and this is all throughout the bible and this is this is our concern and this is why we come together and we say hey you know we really need to stop and look and see what are we subjecting ourselves to because something obviously in this world is not working and if you look at the talmud it, it seriously is it's upside down and backwards it's upside down and backwards that's just like our system that's how it reads just like our system is so i mean there's a lot of weird patterning here i think a lot of uh re revelations people would have a, a lot of aha moments you know looking at this and realizing oh okay well I look at how everything's being handled and and look who's in charge and we have to do something different and again, I want to reiterate that I think most people don't have a clue. So most people think they're doing right when actually they're being manipulated. And when we look at the geopolitical situation, there's obviously uh, a tier, most <laughs> of the politicians in, in our Western political structure that turn a blind eye to anything that Israel does good, bad, or indifferent. Um, and this is because this is what the system really is in support of. It, it's in support of uh, those that came and conquered the indigenous people of this planet, uh, who also obviously are, are humanoid and can inter interbreed. Now, most people don't have a clue it, whether you're, uh, you know, Christian, Muslim, whether you're Jewish, whether you're any sort of belief structure. Most people don't have a clue. They simply want to do right. But in doing, uh, in falling under the God spell, they are easily manipulated. And this is how we get the Inquisition. This is how we had what happened to the Native Americans. This is how, you know, they were all kicked off of their land and shoved away as they were viewed as lesser than. When you look to the Talmud, what does it promise? It promises fame and fortune. It, it promises that you will be elevated above others, that you will be admired that you will have you know all your needs fulfilled this is exactly what the illuminati 
um, offer people when they try to get them to come on board. This is exactly what Satan <laughs> offered to, to Yeshua in the biblical story. Everything could be yours. Well, this is exactly the system showing what it really does. And the words literally, again, say, they literally say, you will be elevated in status. The, the world will admire you. The world will, you know, look to you because you are part of the elite that oppresses everybody. And this is the reality. So just a quick line of thought on that. Look forward to your comments as always. Thank you for your support. Uh, help us, you know, by spreading these things. And, you know, look for yourself. Look for yourself. Get into um, this and really, really see what it really, really says. It's not about the creator of this universe. It's about the masters. The Lord of hosts is the Lord of a army. You know, that's what it really, really translates to. This is a, a military takeover. When you look to these beautiful Tartarian buildings, you know, those are remnants of our heritage that has been wiped out by the system and by the indigenous, you know, people that were on this planet uh, that has been taken over slowly but surely. And it is a battle that's still ongoing. It's thousands of years o old and it's not over yet. The, the whole difference is in this time, we're starting to realize what's going on. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.